resistance is futile. And now, a show that boldly goes where no show has gone before. The Week in Geek, with your hosts, David DeCorby and Brian Held. Here to cover the hottest trends and topics in science fiction news and events, with movie, book, and game reviews, cosplay, comic book, and convention commentary, interviews with authors, media guests, and local fandom. So raise your nerd flag high and prepare to be assimilated. This is The Week in Geek. And now, here's your host, David DeCorbier and Brian Hell. Good afternoon, New Orleans and Biloxi, my proxy. This Hi. is The Week in Geek. I'm your host, David DeCorbier with Brian Held. And we are live at CoastCon 38. Yes, that's in Biloxi, Mississippi, at the uh, Gulf Coast uh, Convention Center right next to the Coliseum. Yes, and just like uh, Karen said last week on the show, just like the, the Catholics, come home. <laughs> come home, Catholics. Come home, nerds. Right. So, uh, yeah, we, we are here. We are set up right here in the gaming room slash fan room slash uh, the all room. Oh, yeah. No, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, a lot of fan groups out. Uh, I see the Rebel Legion. We've got the Mandalorian mercenaries. Plenty of steampunk folks running around. Crew to Who is always a staple here. Solar is set up over there. My, my son DJ is actually in there with the Boffer weapons right now, yeah. uh, beating a snot out of somebody or yeah. vice versa. Yeah, that's uh, the uh, LARPers, the Southern Organization of Live Action Role Players out there. Or, yeah, reenactors. Reenactors yeah. or role players? No, it's reenactors. It's re-enactors. And what are they reenacting? Uh, Tolkien, as Tolkien. far as I, I know. <laughs> but uh, our friends uh, with Southern Geek, they're here. Um, uh, uh, Cyphercon here, L- Lose Anime, BayouCon, just a ton of hidden ton of gamers. Hidden, hidden gamers, gamers, yeah. Yep, yep. And uh, Goodman Games is also here. They are the uh, purveyors of X Crawl and DCC Dungeon Crawl Classics. And uh, I got to play, man. I finally got to roll some dice, play some pen and paper role playing games last night, dude. It's great. Finally, it's been like it's been a l- too long, too oh, yeah. long. Uh, so hey, uh, you wanna you wanna do our normal model? We should, we should yeah. do that. So as always, we strongly urge you to check out the Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash the week in geek. Give us a like, follow us on Twitter at Twig Radio, and check out our website for all our sponsors, twigradio.com. Go there, check out all our sponsors, go support our sponsors and tell them you heard it on the Weekend Geek. And don't forget, you can always check out our archives. That's at WGSO.com. Just click in the upper left for the archives section. You'll find us on Week and Geek. And if you don't have access to a radio or not near a computer, you can always download the TuneIn Radio app and uh, see not only our archives there, but listen to us live. That, that they can. So let me give you a quick rundown of today's show. As always, you know, we'll have Scungy and his pick of the week, and then we're going to uh, do our newest segment, Top Nerd News, and then you know we'll close out today's show with This Week in Geek History. We'll probably throw in a little word of the day, but we also have a great guest coming on in the next segment, uh, Susanna Lee, the GM of Con TV. That is the new uh, streaming TV shows that, that Wizard World has put out, contv.com. What, what is it? Uh, Netflix for nerds? It's Netflix for nerds in essence. You know, I don't know if they've copywritten that or what, but uh, they, they have all the streaming shows and uh, lots of like old horror flicks and, and some cartoons and, and some original programming. Yeah. And they, tomorrow they have a premiere of a new show called Fight of the Living Dead, and Susanna Lee, the GM of Con TV, is going to come on and give us a lot more information about that. They also have Bruce Campbell's Last Fan Standing, and uh, we were at the premiere taping at, at yeah. Wizard World here in uh, New Orleans. So uh, without much further ado, we have a lot to get to and not a lot of time, so we have our boy Scungy waiting patiently on the phone. So without much further ado, let's do Scungy and his Pick of the Week. Scungy. Pick of the Week. I am not what you would call a handsome man. Scungy's Pick of the Week is brought to you by Wits Inn Bar and Pizza Kitchen. Find them on the web at witsin.com. Scungy's Pick of the Week. I love lamp. I love lamp. Scungy, what's shaking bacon? What's happening, gentlemen? I am so envious that y'all are 
out there in wonderful Biloxi with all the other geeks, and I'm stuck in the storeroom. Ha uh-huh. ha. Hey, look, it doesn't matter, Scungy, because as beautiful as the water and the sand is out on the beach, we're still inside. So. Exactly. But you can at least see it. You can, you can walk <laughs> outside and look at it. So what's our pick of the week this week, Scungy? Battlefield Hardline, the newest game in the Battlefield series. Okay. Um, it's uh, out on all the different systems. And to tell you the truth, this is a game I've waited my entire life for. It is Cops and Robbers. What? Yeah, Cops and Robbers. So normally Battlefield's been more about, you know, wartime, like um, modern warfare, um, vehicle combat, and massive multiplayer online. Well, they changed it up a little bit, and they decided to go the route of you're playing. It's got a single-player mode where you're playing a, a cop, Nicholas Mendoza, who's going through, um, you know, your typical, you know, hardline type cop story. And even when you go from one episode to the other in it, it goes next time on hardline. And it's like you're watching one of those old school high action cop dramas. And so, um, so that, that's what's cool about it. But what's really shined here is the multiplayer, man. The multiplayer is, um, you've got all these different modes, like heist, where you're playing as uh, cops. Uh, you're, you're playing as cops. So one play, side has cops, one side has robbers. And you're trying to uh, get into a, a uh, what do you call it? A, uh, a I, I don't know. Oh, oh, okay. So, sorry about it. Sorry about that. They're trying to get into a, they're trying to get into a bank. And uh, so one side's playing the cops, one side's playing the robbers. Another one is you're trying to boost cars, and the cops are trying to stop the cars from being boosted. So, so I so, mean, wait, are you a cop the whole game, or, or, or can you no, be you a can, robber? Well, I, if you, you're losing me. If you, if you play the single player, yes. You're, if you play the single player, you're a cop. But in the multiplayer, you're, you're not. All right. So, so it... it what makes the game so good, then, Scunzi? Why, why are you so, why are you geeking on it so hard? Because it's cops and robbers, man. Like I said, I mean, <laughs> everybody played cops and robbers as a kid, you know. Right. So well, when now, 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 when now, I used to play cowboys and Indians, but now I have to play pioneers and Native Americans. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, I'm sorry. All right. You know, so, so I, don't know, I don't know what you're playing. Maybe you're playing police uh, enforcement officers and uh, bad decision makers. Uh, <laughs> wrongfully <laughs> accused citizens. Wrongfully accused men. <laughs> so, all right. So, so I mean, but 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 the uh, multiplayer is. Uh, you're saying that's really awesome. Yeah, that's what's really. That's where it's really at is the multiplayer. So, I mean, in the, so, the best. Go ahead. Did we lose him? Scungy? Uh, oh, we uh, lost Scungy. Oh, he, 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 he got attacked in the storeroom, perhaps. Oh, wow. Uh, maybe a whole pile of games fell on his head or something like wow, that. Wow, that would be pretty rough. That's just bad luck for Scungy. Yeah. He's stuck in the storeroom. Oh, he's back? Well, we don't want him back. No, no, we want okay, him back. Okay, we want Come him on. back. All right, Scungy, are you okay? Did something fall on your head? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Scungy, yeah. uh, <clears throat> Battlefield. What um, what platforms? How much? It's on everything. It's on, it's on everything. It's on PC, PlayStation Three, PlayStation Four, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, Xbox One. Okay, I price it's on that. everything, and they have way of the world now. They have a season pass where you can buy a whole bunch of content extra. You know, it's you know, a bunch of yeah, different map new? packs. Oh, okay, all the DLC, right? All right. So, is 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 it is it worth the uh, the extra penny or what? That I don't know about yet because they haven't released any of it yet. So I would kind of hold off and get some reviews, like wait for some reviews on that. Um, oh, you know, Scungy, it, damn, you know, we 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 got Scungy, we got to go to break, and and I just realized something. Well, well while you're talking about that. Uh, you know, Nintendo just made a move. We were going to talk about that in Top Nerd News. Uh, I'm, we're going to need to get your opinion on that next week. Because yeah. Nintendo, I, I know you're still nerd raging on that a little bit. Because they, they made the move over to... 
Yeah, so we're we're gonna get your opinion on that next week. But uh so well look we got we gotta hit the commercial break. So you're saying yes, a definite yes on Battlefield R line? Definite definitely definitely yes. Okay. Can't go wrong. All right, Scunji. Well thank you as always and uh we'll talk to you next week, pal. All right guys, later. Later. Well, I, I, I think he must have gotten hit pretty hard in the head, man. Yeah, I, you know. <laughs> I, the, the. All right, guys. So this is the Week in Geek. I'm your host, David DeCorbier, with Brian Held. And we are live at CoastCon 38 from the convention room floor. So, look, when we come back, we are going to get Susanna Lee on the line, the GM of ConTV, ConTV.com, live streaming internet movies, Netflix for nerds. And Netflix that's, for nerds, yeah. We're going to find out about the new premiere of uh, Fight of the Living Dead that premieres tomorrow. So stay tuned. You're listening to The Weekend Geek on WGSO 990 AM. Spirits on bourbon. Spirits on bourbon. Come to 615 Bourbon, home of the resurrection. Try their gumbo, wings, couchon de lait, or a ribeye steak. Have a shot on Edward's barber chair or sit at his haunted table. Check out their website at spiritsonbourbon.com and watch their video from Spike TV's Bar Rescue. Come to Spirits on Bourbon for a haunting good time. Join the underground, the media underground, Media Underground Comics. I'm doing my part. Join Media Underground Comics at 4953 West Napoleon. Would you like to know more? Open Monday through Saturday from noon to 6. Would you like to know more? Then go to MediaUndergroundComics.com. We have the comics. We have the collectibles. We need you. Media Underground Comics, 4953 West Napoleon and MediaUndergroundComics.com. Wits Inn Bar and Pizza Kitchen. Wits Inn is an upscale neighborhood bar and pizza kitchen in the heart of Mid City at 141 North Carrollton. Wits Inn is open seven days a week and the kitchen is always open late. Make Wits Inn your home for sports. With 18 TVs, the NFL package, and the SCC channel, you'll never miss a game. Check out our food and drink specials like Thursday $5 pizzas and the Wit Maker at WITSINN.com. Wits Inn Bar and Pizza Kitchen. Think, drink, live, laugh. Leave the smoke behind and come chase the clouds at the Vaping Tiger in Metairie. The Vaping Tiger has everything to suit your vaping needs, from starter kits to advanced devices. We specialize in handcrafted, artisan-blended e-juices designed to tickle the most fickle taste buds. Come see us at 2812 Athenia Parkway, one block off Vets behind the Lazy Boy Gallery. That's the Vaping Tiger, 2812 Athenia Parkway, and at VapingTiger.com. Come out of the smoke and join us in the clouds. Come to New Orleans' friendly local gaming shop, Go For Games, located on 701 David Drive in Metairie. Games like Warhammer, War Machine, Magic the Gathering, Hero Clicks, Pathfinder, and many more. Visit us at GoForGamesNola.com. That's G O, the number four, GamesNola.com, for the latest news and upcoming events. We're open seven days a week. Call us at 504 324 8335 or come on by. Go for games, a hangout for gamers by gamers. Tubby and Coos Mid City Bookshop. Before you get booked up, head over to 631 North Carrollton, right off Orleans, to Tubby and Coos Mid City Bookshop. Off the books, Tubby and Coos is a nerd mecca for books, board games, and geeky t shirts. So book it over to Tubby and Coos Mid City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton. If you don't want to do it by the book, use their free Wi Fi and check their stock at tubbyandcoos.com. Tubby and Coos Mid City Bookshop, where it's all geek to me. Hello, this is Zeb Relios from Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to The Week in Geek on WGSO 990 AM. Stay tuned, otherwise I'm going to bash you like I bash those bucket heads. <laughs> Welcome back, New Orleans. This is The Week in Geek. I'm your host, David DeCorbier, with Brian Held. And once again, we are live here at CoastCon 38 in Biloxi, Mississippi. At, at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Convention Center, right next to the Coliseum. 
That is correct. I, I still call it the Coliseum. I don't yeah. know. You know. The convention center is a little too fancy for me. Wow. Well, yeah. The old school. All right. So without much further ado, we, we have a very special guest on the line, Ms. Susanna Lee, the GM of Con TV. It's ConTV.com, and it is the uh, – Live streaming service uh, of the uh, Wizard World arm, I believe. So let's uh, let's bring on Susanna Lee and and uh, find out exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, Miss Lee, how are you doing? Hi guys, I'm doing great. Excited to be talking to you. Oh, thank you. We appreciate it very much. So so tell us a, a little bit more about about ConTV.com and the streaming service, and and a little bit more about the programming. So, Con TV launched two weeks ago. We are a destination for all things Comic-Con. We've got um, about 2,500 pieces of content, TV shows, movies, um, live streams from conventions, lots of horror, lots of sci-fi, lots of anime, action, adventure. It's kind of a one-stop destination for all kind of all weird, wonderful, cool fan franchises, and we're having a lot of fun with it, so... So yeah, um, I've so heard it been called. Uh, ago, yeah, huh? I heard it been called Netflix for nerds, like a little Netflix for nerds kind of thing <laughs> going on there. Yeah, the idea is that you know I don't know about you guys, but I could spend hours scrolling around trying to find something I wanted to watch, and we realized that by having some kind of cool curation and a customized destination, we could help fans find and discover all sorts of new properties and and cool stuff to watch. Um, so we're pretty excited about being driven by the community and. As, as we grow, we're taking fan recommendations and referrals. We're really excited about um, working collaboratively with the community to come up with new content. And we've got um, some really cool shows in the pipeline. So I think it's going to be a really exciting couple months for us. Well, and, and you know, I know that uh, Wizard World is doing a lot of filming at all of their events. So, I mean, how much content is there out there available that has yet to even be seen? Oh, lots. Lots, lots. Um, we're going to be filming at two or three Comic-Con conventions a month um, and scaling up from there. We've got a live studio. We're going to start kicking off in the next few weeks. And um, fans can see, you know, probably 10 to 20 new hours of content a week on our service. So the good news is there's always going to be something new and fresh. Well, you know, speaking of, of new and fresh, let's, that's a great segue. You, you've got a new premiere coming on tomorrow, uh, Fight of the Living Dead. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> Fight of the Living Dead is awesome. It's really crazy. It's this, you know, it's like a massive, it's a total spoof of the kind of, the, 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 we joke, it's Survivor meets Walking Dead. It's a spoof of the reality competition with this really cool cast of YouTubers. Um, I just seen the prank, these prank guys, some, some really awesome, um, a really awesome crew. And they get kidnapped and wake up in a women's prison, locked and chained to beds, and have to figure out how to, one, escape, and two, keep from being eaten alive and bitten by zombies. And it's really fun. So it, is it a little bit tongue-in-cheek? It's not taking itself too seriously? It's very tongue-in-cheek. It's, oh, it's, that's... We had... Too much fun making it, and I hope it. I hope it shows um, for fans watching it. No, that's that's great to hear because like Survivor's way too serious for me, you know. <laughs> and it's an ep it, it it's an episodic thing, right? I mean, it, I, y'all already have all the episodes done, or all the episodes coming up at once, or is it going to be released slowly? Yeah, so you guys can tune in this Sunday to Con TV. You can get Con TV. We have a website, ConTV.com. Um, we also are on Roku. You can download us on um, on Apple or Android devices. And all 11 episodes will be open on Sunday. Um, the episodes kind of are, they're really fun. They're short. They're 5 to 10 minutes each. And it's, it's easy viewing and, and super fun. So now y'all also have a, a, another one. We were, we were, you know, we're based in New Orleans. And uh, we were at the New Orleans Comic Con. And we got to sit in on the premiere taping of Last Fan Standing with Bruce Campbell. So uh, tell me a little bit more about that because that was a lot of fun. I know a lot of people weren't, didn't have the opportunity to be in there. So tell them what they missed. Bruce is amazing. I mean, I, he was, you know, made to be a game show host. This guy is so funny and so snarky. And he has put together, you know, the, the Last Fan Standing was driven 100% by Bruce. So... He, you know, it's very rare that you have talent that conceptualizes a show. And by the way, he invested in the show. He, like, this is his baby, and he has made something so amazing. We had a, 
we had live tapings at the convention where fans could view some dead uh, mobile devices to vote who would, and the winner would get to be on stage with him and compete to be the last man standing and all of this kind of weird, quirky, obscure trivia, who knows the most and who can stand a chance against Bruce, who's a brutal, brutally uh, humor-filled, but brutal host. And uh, it's just it's just one of my favorite things we've done. Yeah, he, he really doesn't take it easy on, on, on the uh, contestants <laughs> because I remember one of the first questions was, what movie is this quote from? And he said, this is my boomstick. Right. And he said, if you get this wrong, I will punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the dude got it wrong. He goes, evil dead. And he's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so, he yeah, Bruce Campbell. Guy too. It's fun watching fans like Quiver and his uh, – it's good. Yeah, he, he really and he, he is a, a very charismatic man. And so th those are just some of the original programs, and y'all have a lot of other streaming uh, uh, other programs on there, correct? Yeah, we've got Evil Dead you just mentioned, um, Farscape, a bunch of, I don't know, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh! or anime properties. We've got a really, really cool offering. Wow. That's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, so it, and it ranges, it ranges that's from all, all ages, right? Because, I mean, i got a little nine-year-old, you know? So, I mean, I, there, there's stuff for him and there's stuff for, you know, 90-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if 90-year-old, but uh, we definitely we definitely have a kid section. You can check out whole curated lineup of kids' content. Um, and then, you know, we're, we've got stuff for all demos. Fangirls are a huge audience these days. We're working on getting more female-driven properties. Um, we certainly that's have great. tons of stuff for horror fans. Tons of stuff for sci-fi fans. It's um, it's a lot, and it's growing quickly. So, we also encourage people to give us feedback if people have you know content they're creating or content ideas. You can go on our website. You can submit ideas to us. We're, we're really excited to be getting feedback from the community and evolving this with uh, with input from everyone. And that's the contv.com website, right? Contv.com. Yep. All you can right. also check and us yeah, out on social I, media. Yeah, yeah, especially uh, y'all follow. Let people follow y'all on Twitter at Con TV Channel because that's how I got in touch with you guys, and y'all got back with me. Great, it, it was y'all are y'all are on on top of it. So, Miss Lee, I truly want to thank you because we're getting ready to hit our uh, news break here. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll strongly suggest everyone to go check out ConTV.com. Thank you, Miss Lee. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for having us. We're excited. Thank you so much. Thanks. You have a great day. You too. All right, guys. We're about to hit the break. This is the Weekend Geek. I'm your host, David DeCorbier, with Brian Held. And uh, we are live here at CoastCon 38. So uh, stay tuned. On the other end of the break, we'll be doing uh, Top, Top Nerd, Nerd News. Nerd. So yeah. stay tuned. This is WGSO 990. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. 990. 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 stay tuned. Spirits on bourbon. Spirits on bourbon. Come to 615 Bourbon, home of the resurrection. Try their gumbo, wings, couchon de lait, or a ribeye steak. Have a shot on Edward's barber chair or sit at his haunted table. Check out their website at spiritsonbourbon.com and watch their video from Spike TV's Bar Rescue. Come to Spirits on Bourbon for a haunting good time. Wits Inn Bar and Pizza Kitchen. Wits Inn is an upscale neighborhood bar and pizza kitchen in the heart of Mid-City at 141 North Carrollton. Wits Inn is open seven days a week and the kitchen is always open late. Make Wits Inn your home for sports. With 18 TVs, the NFL package, and the SCC channel, you'll never miss a game. Check out our food and drink specials like Thursday $5 pizzas and the Wit Maker at WITSINN.com. Wits Inn Bar and Pizza Kitchen. Think, drink, live, laugh. Join the underground, the Media Underground, Media Underground Comics. I'm doing my part. Join Media Underground Comics at 4953 West Napoleon. Would you like to know more? Open Monday through Saturday from noon to 6. Would you like to know more? Then go to MediaUndergroundComics.com. We have the comics. We have the collectibles. We need you. Media Underground Comics, 4953 West Napoleon and MediaUndergroundComics.com. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. 
Before you get booked up, head over to 631 North Carrollton, right off Orleans, to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. Off the books, Tubby and Coos is a nerd mecca for books, board games, and geeky t-shirts. So book it over to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton. If you don't want to do it by the book, use their free Wi-Fi and check their stock at tubbyandcoos.com. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop, where it's all geek to me. This is the Blaze Radio News. I'm Kay Long. Chaos and terror at the Armstrong Airport in New Orleans when a man armed with a machete and wasp spray goes after TSA workers. Traveler Ron Hicks telling New Orleans station WWL-TV he's in line right in front of the attacker. What he did was raised his, he had like a three-foot machete, and he raised that up and was running through, and he was, wasn't after people, he was after the agents, it looked like to me, because that's all who, who, who he went towards. And he went around and uh, uh, attacked the the agent. Now I didn't see her get cut or whatever, but I, I heard, later heard she had. But I saw her then backing up and firing three times, and he just fell over on his face. The machete attacker identified as Richard White. He's in the hospital. The motive for that attack not known. The U.S. reportedly pulling its last special forces unit from Yemen. CNN saying about 100 special forces troops evacuated because of the deteriorating security situation in that country. The U.S. closing its embassy in Yemen's capital after rebels take over control of the city last month. On Friday, ISIS terrorists claiming responsibility for bombing attacks on two mosques in Yemen, killing more than 130 people, injuring hundreds more. A tragic story out of New York. The Blaze Radio's Brad James with the details. Seven children, ages 5 to 15, are dead after a fire trapped them inside their Brooklyn home. The children's mother and one surviving child are in critical condition in the hospital. Witnesses heard the mother screaming for someone to help rescue her children after she jumped from a window. An electric hot plate in the kitchen starting the fire. Will he run in 2016? Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz Handler's telling the media he's making what they call an important speech Monday at Liberty University in Virginia. No details as yet. This is news on the Blaze Radio Network. Truth lives here. Wits Inn Bar and Pizza Kitchen. Wits Inn is an upscale neighborhood bar and pizza kitchen in the heart of Mid City at 141 North Carrollton. Wits Inn is open seven days a week and the kitchen is always open late. Make Wits Inn your home for sports. With 18 TVs, the NFL package, and the SCC channel, you'll never miss a game. Check out our food and drink specials like Thursday $5 pizzas and the Wit Maker at WITSINN.com. Wits Inn Bar and Pizza Kitchen. Think, drink, live, laugh. MoFo 514 City Park Avenue, where Southeast Asia meets Southeast Louisiana. Hey, what more can a guy ask for? Enjoy Vietnamese and Thai recipes with local New Orleans ingredients, spring rolls, banh mi style po' boys, noodle bowls, and entree specials like our whole fried fish. Time for the medicine! That's right, Egg. Weekday happy hour from 3 to 6 with drink specials and half-priced crispy wings. Let's try that again. MoFo 514 City Park Avenue across from Delgado and MoFoNola.com. Come to New Orleans' friendly local gaming shop, Go For Games, located on 701 David Drive in Metairie. Games like Warhammer, War Machine, Magic the Gathering, Heroclix, Pathfinder, and many more. Visit us at GoForGamesNola.com. That's G-O, the number four, GamesNola.com. For the latest news and upcoming events, we're open seven days a week. Call us at 504-324-8335 or come on by. Go For Games, a hangout for gamers by gamers. Leave the smoke behind and come chase the clouds at the Vaping Tiger in Metairie. The Vaping Tiger has everything to suit your vaping needs, from starter kits to advanced devices. We specialize in handcrafted, artisan-blended e-juices designed to tickle the most fickle taste buds. Come see us at 2812 Athenia Parkway, one block off Vets behind the Lazy Boy Gallery. That's the Vaping Tiger, 2812 Athenia Parkway, and at VapingTiger.com. Come out of the smoke and join us in the clouds. Hello, creeps. It's me, John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper, and you're listening to The Week in Geek. <laughs> Welcome back, New Orleans and Biloxi. You're listening to The Week in Geek on WGSO 990 AM. This is Brian Held with David DeGorbier. All right, man. So, um, 
That was a good interview, huh? Yeah, no, it was a fantastic interview. I loved it. Yeah, so guys, honestly, go check out contv.com. Uh, I mean, Bruce Campbell, you get to watch oh, yeah. And here's a kicker. It's free. It is. It's free. So, if I mean, you want it, it's the premium awesome. content, it's like six ninety nine, I think. Yeah. And, and there's all sort of extra rewards and stuff for subscribers, but uh, you can access their a uh, majority of their content for free. Yeah. Awesome sauce. All right, so uh, top nerd news. Hey, top nerd news. So let's let's do it. Do it. Top nerd news. Now our top nerd news stories from around the world, brought to you by Media Underground Comics. Find them on the World Wide Web at mediaundergroundcomics.com. And now your top nerd news stories. So I, you cut some good audio, man. So I, um, you sent me that email the other day about the uh, uh, streaming music has finally made more than CDs. Yes, that's because, crazy. You know, it, 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 it's funny. The Pandora and Spotify list. I mean, everybody's got those lists. And uh, I mean, can can you name a single place to buy a damn CD? Um, yeah, there's no like, uh, you know. I mean, Music Virgin shops. Records closed. I mean, there's no there's no CD stores really anymore. There's vinyl, you know, record shops around. I think right. Peaches and all that stuff, or maybe like the Mushroom down by Tulane. Yeah, I guess. But I mean, for yeah. the most part, I mean, CDs are they're a dying breed. They are. I mean, I, mean, I don't. MP3s and, and streaming audio is where it's at. The only the only CDs that I get are from like artists themselves, like right. when I see them at events. And actually, the bilge pumps from the Ren Fair, uh -huh. ha they have a little thumb drive that you could buy for. If you buy it, you will get all their music for life. You just bring it back, and they will upload any new album. Oh, that's pretty yeah, cool. It is. Well, but yeah. uh, yeah, streaming services accounted for 1.87 billion in revenue last year, where CDs were only 1.85. Well, yeah, and and it means that the streaming accounted for twenty seven percent, as opposed to twenty one percent the year before. So just that, just that little bit. I mean, a six percent bump. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. You know? And I mean, the crazy part is, I the reason I found this shocking is because I'm still an old man. I but you know the only time I get CDs, I immediately just rip it and just yeah. put it straight into my my my, my digital library and oh, yeah. then the CD just I usually lose it somewhere. Right. So I mean, you know, uh. I think this is my acknowledgement that I've finally just given up and I am moving into the digital age. Right. I'm no longer kicking and screaming. I, I've just I've just admitted defeat and that it is the clearer way to go. It makes absolutely more sense to do it this way. Well, in a segue off of this real quick, something that's actually not on our list, but it ignites a little bit of a nerd rage in me, Ooh. right? Yeah, I know. Because I've seen these articles about uh, the final the, the, the final nail in the coffin for cable is coming, right? Yes. <laughs> With the launch of the uh, HBO oh, uh, the HBO Go, right? right? And then, of course, uh, Showtime and, and other channels. I, are I, I pray to God that you're right because, I mean, I, I pay $160 a month on Cox Cable. Well, you know, the thing is, is that, that? Well, I don't know what that was, but we're going to keep <laughs> on moving. He's saying we got to keep going. Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. All right. Moving on. Okay. So uh, Teslas, the new Tesla cars. Yeah. Um, the, in uh, three months, perhaps, they might be able to drive themselves. That would be cool. Uh Here's here's the kicker. They're already doing the iRobot scenario. They're okay. talking about if a if a car is in a suburban area, that it will have to do a a a like a ratio to decide whether it should slam on the brakes to not hit a child running across they're, the street. They're still working on that. I, I know. Yeah. But but they they that's why you haven't really seen it on there because no one wants to make that acknowledgement yet that they'd have to either kill the kid. Or hit a bus full of nuns. Nobody wants to make that decision yet. Well, that's that's a tough decision. It is a tough you know? decision. But, but I think I think this aspect is like uh, interstate travel, right? Yeah, I, you know, just like what was that movie, Minority Report or whatever, where everything yes. they weren't like like they weren't like on tracks. But you know, why? I mean, everybody's already you know putting on makeup, eating cheeseburgers as they're driving anyway. Might, <laughs> might as well let the computers take over. I, you know what? I just want to take a nap while I drive. I heard that. Preach yes. on, preach on. All right, what we got next? Um, what is next on the list? Uh, well, uh, Nintendo Mobile. Yes, uh, they they have. What do you call it? They they are going to 
Well, I, they're, they're establishing gaming on a mobile platform is what they're doing. They've said for years that they weren't going to do it, right? right? And, you know, there's, there's the argument about, well, if they move to a mobile platform, does it make their consoles irrelevant? Right. They they claim no and but and they have jumped into mobile whole hog. They 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 jo joined uh, alliance or teamed up with DNA and actually remember that it was a it was a app attack of the app. It was a pick of the week a long time ago. The GI Joe game was put out by DNA and all the Transformer games. They have a lock. DNA has a lock on a lot of the eighties. Uh, okay. Uh, what do you call it? Intellectual properties or whatever. So they. Uh, they're kind of like a logical choice to hook up with them because they are a mobile giant because they have the pay-to-play scenarios locked. You know, yeah. they, it, well, most of their games are free to play, yeah. but if you want to make it further, you got to pony up some cash. Well, and I don't know if, if it's really necessarily an argument, right? I mean, the platforms themselves, right, the actual consoles are usually a loss leader, right? They're usually losing money yes. or just breaking even on that device because it's the games where the money's at. Well, they, the Nintendo seems to think that this will encourage people to buy a platform by seeing like like here's a here's a little bit of a taste of Mario buy the console and you'll get the whole thing uh, possibly I mean I'm not sure if I believe that well and I think I think it's the the cross platform you know is is really going to be important right does your mobile device sync with you know if they still have like DS type devices, right. does it sync with, you know, the Wii U or whatever the console name is? You know, if that's seamless, then it may work. Well, I already started to feel the pinch of not having an Xbox One. You know, just having a plain old Xbox 360, I'm starting to feel a pinch because I don't have. A, damn it, yeah. I don't have all the multimedia capabilities that the Xbox One has on my Xbox. I don't feel the pinch at all with the PC. You're a tool. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so Shut up. I put this in on the list. Uh, the uh, that Batgirl cover, right? Yes. A lot of controversy with uh, the the Batgirl cover with the Joker getting yanked, right? It was right. the artist that requested it to be removed. It was a right, variant. Right. He, he did it. And uh, DC complied, and of course the internet exploded about it. However, I noticed this article that it's already been memed. Okay. All right. And uh, an artist got out there. He took uh, one of those blank cover copies of uh, Princess Leia comic. Okay. And drew it on there with Grand Moff Tarkin in the role of Joker in that uh, picture, and her with you know bound up with the the makeup on her face, the the red yeah, lipstick, the red, the red lipstick, yeah. Invaders in the background. And when I when I looked this up and I saw it, uh, it was already riding at sixty one dollars on eBay. Damn. Yeah. So uh, I just think it's interesting. I you know. I wonder if that's going places. I don't know, man. Uh, this, this is a topic that I try to avoid because I tend to screw up this topic a lot. Well, you know. I, I am not the most cuddly and open PC kind of guy there is. So, The last time you, you even got near this topic, my phone exploded. Yeah, so how about we – is there something else we can talk yeah, about? We can, oh, we can yes. move on. All right, the you watch this video. All right, the Pixels trailer. Oh, thank God for Pac-Man. Speaking of Pac-Man, the Pixels trailer. Yep. It's the new movie coming out with Adam Sandler, Tyrion Lannister. He has a real name, and I can't remember what it is. And uh, uh, basically, the the Earth is under attack by Pac-Man, Galaga, Centipede. And it's all these pixelated monsters eating the world. And uh, a bunch of nerds who are really great at the 80s arcade games have to save the world. You watched the trailer with me. You hadn't seen it yet. Yeah, I just watched it before the show. And it's, look, Adam Sandler. Sandler. Yeah, I, I'm done with that dude. Right. And but the trailer looks great. Okay, okay look. It looks I, fun. I will give them points. At least trying to be a little bit of original, right? Because, right. you know, uh, we're in the fucking dark. Oh, All right. God. We are in the gosh darn dark so, times. The dark times of the reboots. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I, I love this show. Yes, we're in the dark times I of the reboots. I love this British stuff. Yes. <laughs> Don't let go. And we're begging. We're begging for new content. <laughs> From Hollywood, and this is new content. It is new content, but it just looks hokey, and it's you know. supposed to be hokey. It's Adam Sandler; he doesn't know how to do anything other than that. Well, I'm not. <laughs> you are 
Beat Red. I love my job. I love my job. Speaking of, you know, if we do get canned, we're going to try to go to Mars, but apparently we can't because the whole Mars colony thing was apparently a money grab. What? It, it was it was a lie. It was a farce. These people that put in money to try to go to to the the Mars colony and start a colony, uh the company went defunct. The okay. company is is no mas. No mas. What? And so we're not going to Mars now. We're not sending people to go die on Mars now. I what, mean, we got to come up that? with a better way. Well, I don't know. I mean, what was no? What was the company? Do you remember? Uh, it's on our Facebook page. Okay. Um, Brandon Black, our, our moderator. I'm, we're gonna have him probably put that back up. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the Weekend Geek. Uh, Brandon Black is the one who pointed it out to me that that the company went defunct. So we'll be getting back to that. So, oh God, we're already going. All right. Hey, uh, real quick, I just saw that eBay on that Princess Leia cover, okay. that variant with the Batgirl thing, two hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. All right, guys, this is the Week in Geek. I'm your host, David DeCorbier, with Brian Eld, and we are live here at CoastCon 38. So stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to go straight into this Week in Geek history. But maybe we'll teach Brian a new word. <laughs> so stay tuned. Let's just go straight to break, Daryl. Peace out, people. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wits Inn Bar and Pizza Kitchen. Wits Inn is an upscale neighborhood bar and pizza kitchen in the heart of Mid-City at 141 North Carrollton. Wits Inn is open seven days a week and the kitchen is always open late. Make Wits Inn your home for sports. With 18 TVs, the NFL package, and the SCC channel, you'll never miss a game. Check out our food and drink specials like Thursday $5 pizzas and the Wit Maker at WITSINN.com. Wits Inn Bar and Pizza Kitchen. Think, drink, live, laugh. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. Before you get booked up, head over to 631 North Carrollton, right off Orleans, to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop. Off the books, Tubby and Coos is a nerd mecca for books, board games, and geeky t-shirts. So book it over to Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop at 631 North Carrollton. If you don't want to do it by the book, use their free Wi-Fi and check their stock at tubbyandcoos.com. Tubby and Coos Mid-City Bookshop, where it's all geek to me. Spirits on Bourbon. Spirits on Bourbon. Come to 615 Bourbon, home of the resurrection. Try their gumbo, wings, couchon de lait, or a ribeye steak. Have a shot on Edward's barber chair or sit at his haunted table. Check out their website at spiritsonbourbon.com and watch their video from Spike TV's Bar Rescue. Come to Spirits on Bourbon for a haunting good time. Leave the smoke behind and come chase the clouds at the Vaping Tiger in Metairie. The Vaping Tiger has everything to suit your vaping needs, from starter kits to advanced devices. We specialize in handcrafted, artisan-blended e-juices designed to tickle the most fickle taste buds. Come see us at 2812 Athenia Parkway, one block off Vets behind the Lazy Boy Gallery. That's the Vaping Tiger, 2812 Athenia Parkway, and at VapingTiger.com. Come out of the smoke and join us in the class. Join the underground, the Media Underground, Media Underground Comics. I'm doing my part. Join Media Underground Comics at 4953 West Napoleon. Would you like to know more? Open Monday through Saturday from noon to 6. Would you like to know more? Then go to MediaUndergroundComics.com. We have the comics. We have the collectibles. We need you. Media Underground Comics, 4953 West Napoleon and MediaUndergroundComics.com. MoFo, 514 City Park Avenue, where Southeast Asia meets Southeast Louisiana. Hey, what more can a guy ask for? Enjoy Vietnamese and Thai recipes with local New Orleans ingredients, spring rolls, banh mi-style po'boys, noodle bowls, and entree specials like our whole fried fish. Time for the medicine! That's right, Egg. Weekday happy hour from 3 to 6 with drink specials and half-priced crispy wings. Let's try that again. MoFo, 514 City Park Avenue, across from Delgado, and MoFoNola.com. You got the touch You got the power Yeah My name is Optimus Prime and you are listening to the Weekend Geek Autobots transform 
and roll out. Welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to The Week in Geek on WTSO 990 AM. This is Brian Held with David Effin de Corbier. <laughs> You're, you're going to run that to the ground for the rest of the day. This is awesome. All, All right. right. So before we uh, get any further in the show, let's uh, – a long-time listener, long-time caller. We haven't heard from him in a while. Matthew in Metairie. Matthew in Metairie. How you doing, buddy? Doing all right. Just haven't been uh, kind of very talkative, but Joe talking about the uh, self-driving car. Nobody's ever answered this question. When you get your blue screen of death when you're sitting at your computer – you can just right. reboot the computer. What happens if you're taking a nap right. in your car and it gets the blue screen of death? I and would imagine, that's a reasonable going. question, but I would imagine that they would have to program into the firmware that the, that the car would like slow, like glide off to the side of the road safely and just stop, right? And, I mean, that would just have to be inherent safety features. Yeah, I could right, see what right, happens exactly. on Lake Pontchartrain, the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway when that happens. The side of the road uh, on that if, bridge. If you, is, don't, you, if you don't soft. get the if you don't get the blue screen of death, you get the windshield of death. So <laughs> t- t- take a pick. I'm not sure which one it is, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, this, but I, I would have to guess yeah, about I, that. I think we're we're further away than than the Tesla company is is hinting at. But I mean, I'm sure these are you know questions that, that have probably already been addressed. I would assume because yeah, I'm have sure to be able to assume, because but you could be no, wrong. No company. No company is going to take a chance to lose their company uh, from a simple, you know, uh, software or firmware uh, uh, mistake. You and, know? and look, I, I for one, welcome our new Google, uh, Google self-driving overlords, <laughs> right? Who I'm sure have asked those type of questions. You probably have. All right, Matthew, yeah, thanks for calling. I've buddy. never heard the answers. Ciao. All right. See you. All right. You know what? We need to teach Brian a new word. Okay. Brian. Uh, so, without much further ado, let's do uh, a word of the day. So, here we go. Word of the day. And now, it's time for the word of the day. Hell, you could say that 10,000 times and it still wouldn't be enough. It fires me up, man. I love it. Say it one more time. Shake it back! The word of the day. I love it. Say it one more time. Shake it back! The word of the day is brought to you by MoFo Restaurant. Find them on the web at mofonola.com. M-O-P-H-O-N-O-L-A.com. The word of the day. So, Brian... It is apparent that I have had this effect on you. The word today is deleterious. Yes, it's a good word. Deleterious. It is injurious to the health. Harmful or injurious. Apparently, just being around you has had a deleterious effect on your vocabulary. <laughs> just, just, just saying. So deleterious, guys. Throw it out in the conversation. Pretend to be smart. So, all right, now we really got to get into this yes. week in geek history. So, uh, without much further ado, this week in geek history. This week in geek history. We're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh my gosh! Ah! 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 This week in geek history is brought to you by Tubby and Coos Mid City Bookshop. Check them out at tubbyandcoos.com. Tubby and Coos Mid City Bookshop, the nerd mecca. This week in Geek History. Yes! Oh my gosh! All right, let's roll into it, my man. All right. What do we got? First item on the list, March 17th, 2006. Ah. Directed by James McTeague, V for Vendetta is released in the United oh, States. Oh, yes. yes. This villainous, vicious, suave, V and then vagaries and villain of a, all right yeah no yeah, he, I, that is a great 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 uh quote i love that there, movie. but i don't and, know how he did it and it's sad that alan moore hated it so much you know why well you know it's you know it is what it is. all right moving on moving on great um, movie. if you haven't watched me for vendetta watch it oh yes march 19th 1973 <laughs> i'm gonna murder this name uh kegmasa Kazuki transforms his business 
uh, from repairing jukeboxes to the uh, Konami industry. He made a uh, Contra, Metal Gear, Frogger. Oh, yeah. yes. Well, I'm glad he, he changed careers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, that's that's All right. awesome. Um, next one on the list, uh, March 21st, 1981. For all our Whovians out there, the episode uh, Logoopolis is the uh, last appearance of Tom Baker. Oh, uh, boop, which many considered the doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it was it was the one I grew up on. That was that was that was the doctor to oh, yeah? me, you know. So, <clears throat> all right, yeah. and uh, Bummer. another one is is a, a name that that I'm going to murder, but it's uh, March twenty second, nineteen ninety five. Valery Polyakov, a cosmonaut. Uh, he returned after 437 days in space. He was on the Mir space station, ah. and he uh, set the record for the longest human space flight. Awesome. Hey, that, speaking of space, don't we have a space guest coming up fairly soon? April 11th, we have uh, Les Johnson, an author and a consultant. Um, to you NASA, know. right? Uh, what's or, that? Or he works for NASA, but uh, he's, no, he's, a, he's, he's a private a cons- citizen. He's a private he's citizen, yeah. Right, yeah, right. yeah. Okay, so. I could remember. I, I knew he was like he, he, he's a private citizen, right? Yes, right. Yeah. He's a consultant. So oh, consultant. That's what yes. It is. April eleventh, that interview is going to be coming on. So, all right. You say it's your birthday. It Ba-da-da-da-da-da. is. March sixteenth, nineteen seventy one. Alan Tudyk. Oh, that dude's like a millionaire right now. Oh dude. yeah, con, uh, uh, con man. I can't uh, wait for it. That is unbelievable. All right. Uh, next one on the list. Uh, March seventeenth, nineteen forty eight. Uh. The science fiction author and cyberpunk pioneer William Gibson. I love his guitars. <laughs> oh, that's way that's um, nice. All right, you're gonna like this one. Uh, March nineteenth, nineteen fifty five is Bruce Willis. Oh, yes. Now I have a machine gun too. Mm-hmm. Uh, March twentieth, nineteen forty eight. John not Delancey. What was it? What? Uh, what was the movies where I have a machine gun too? Oh my God. Uh, what, Die Hard? Die Hard. I was oh. saying, I was, what did I say? Lethal Weapon for some reason. <laughs> die Hard. Okay, sorry. Squirrel. yippee ki <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, uh, March 20th, 1948, John Delancey. Q. Yeah, right. Yep. And uh, last one on the list, March 22nd, 1931, William Shatner. Guys, look, follow us on Twitter, at Twig Radio. I'm trying to get Bill William Shatner on Supernatural. Hashtag everything Super Shatner Super Shatner so, jeez, great show. Good. All right, once again, follow us on Twitter. Twitter, follow us on Facebook. Give us a like. Check out the face, uh, the, the website, twigradio.com. Tune in radio app, wgso.com. Hey, from Coastcon 38, this is the Weekend Geek. I'm your host, David DeCorbier, with Brian Held. So, till next time, keep your nerd flag raised high. GFL. Peace out. Leave the smoke behind and come chase the...